All right, I'm just commenting on a new lecture by Professor John G. Williamson about non-commutativity and what he calls the, the root energy, which is essentially the non-local quantum potential that Basil J. Hiley and David Bohm uh, discuss. And uh, John G. Williamson, he's relying on Louis de Broglie's Law of Phase Harmony. And I, I have corresponded with um, John G. Williamson and telling him about uh, Alain Kahn's um, non-commutative Taurus and he agreed, he replied back to me that, that that is the same model that he uses. And so he just, he just uploaded this new lecture last night and he calls it um, absolute relativity because um, he says, you know, how this non-commutative math enables um, the, the proper understanding of, of all, all of physics, essentially. And it's, um, it, the main secret of it is that all matter is actually based, is actually made of photons. And the photon has a secret um, relativistic spin that's non-commutative. And this is again based on the, the law of phase harmony. So he calls it inverse time. So it's a, it would be a negative frequency and time reversed signal from the future. So he just uses the term emitter. He says when, when a particle on a, on a particle emits a signal into the future and then absorbs a signal from the past. And so the, the electron is actually made of uh, two photons that have um, opposite spin, relativistic spin. That, so the photon has gravitational mass, even though the um, rest mass is zero. And so what happens is, is that because of this non-commutative uh, tori, like a, the donut, it's, he says like, it's actually like a hypersphere. So it's a four dimensional, um, like a Klein bottle and and this is what creates the electron as a point point particle that has mass is it it stops the light because it the light twists in the opposite phase at both the same at the same time from the past and the future and therefore you end up creating mass from that will you create both the um positron and the electron at the same time and the the um the the proton and the electron have the same de Broglie wavelength and so they're 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 basically inseparable as a as hydrogen i mean in terms of understanding their relationship to each other and this is the this is what um, Andrei Buharovich is trying to emphasize with his um, proton spin as storing information. And, and what, what John G. Williamson says is that since all matter is light, the photon itself experiences the whole universe because at the speed of light, um, all matter is in causal causal contact and so it's literally like the fo each photon exists at the cutting edge of the universe with all um 
all of reality, the whole universe, you know, inside the photon, you know, as it's, so this is the 5D black hole um, model of a, like a wormhole, a non-commutative wormhole that, um, you know, with the future guiding the past as like an eternal process. And um, Paul S. Wesson, the astrophysicist Paul S. Wesson, he, he made this same realization in the final, um, his final last few papers, like the final last couple years of his life. Um, and so from the perspective of meditation, the photon is what we can observe externally, but we can, we can listen <clears throat> we can listen to the source of the light. Um, and this this can be experienced like with a strong psychedelic also. Like if somebody does a um like a strong dose of um plant based DMT where the, so that they're in the psychedelic uh, experience for at least an hour or something, well, you know, they can experience that they you can't see the source of the light, the light, but you can listen to the source of the light. And by listening to the source of the light, then um, there's this uh, holographic, um, superluminal signal from the future that's harmonizing the matter, the photon that, that is observed. <clears throat> And then this is what, you know, Louis de Broglie called the law of phase harmony. And so John G. Williamson, he's pointing out that because of Louis de Broglie, we've known ever since the 1950s that there is no relativistic um, rest frame. There's no symmetric rest frame. And so it, basically reality is, is interactive due to relativity, it's always interactive. And because you can't you can't trap light like that unless you make make matter out of it. And in meditation this is called the 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 golden key. The superluminal golden key. It's it's superluminal yin matter. So you can you can absorb the virtual photons and then actually create create new matter by turning turning the light around through meditation and listening to the source of light. And so John G. Williamson he calls this a um, a resonant harmonic coherence. He uses those three words: resonant, harmonic, coherence that's due to non-commutativity. And he says that this resonant harmonic coherence is a new type of energy that can be used, it can be utilized and used for engineering due to his model, his um, theory. You know, he has all the mathematics. He says they're already starting to apply it for engineering based on the the mathematics that he's using to explain all all matter and all the interactions of spin, and he points out that spin is actually four times stronger of a force than than the strong force itself that holds the proton and electron the you know bonds the proton together. So the um, this non-local, non-local spin is then the secret power of meditation, you know. So I'll just leave it at that.